All right, hello everyone. So I've started a new project. I went on vacation last week and spent a bunch of time brainstorming video games with my friend Dougie. In our design session, after some great deliberation, we decided to make a jetpack game, or jetpack simulator. And uh, two weeks later, I've got a bunch of stuff to showcase. So let's get into it. Here's what I've gotten done so far. If you've been watching the channel, you'll see it's a bit out of the blue of me to start making a random ragdoll jetpack game. Uh, for some reason, people have really been enjoying the scary stuff. What? If I killed the lights and added a flashlight to this character, called the whole thing like Nightmare Jetpacks, we'd probably have a sensation. I'll get back to the horror stuff soon enough, but for this project, there were two goals. I needed to actually make the jetpack system, and then make some models. First things first, flight in Unreal Engine 5. This video is edited like a Tarantino movie, so things are a bit out of order. As you can see, I've already got the jetpack put together here at this point. If you're just here for the kit bashing, here's the timecode to skip to that portion of the video. Since the modern attention span is being rotted away to a fine powder, I'm going to edit this segment as if it were radioactive to be exposed to for too long. If you want a full in-depth tutorial that taught me, I'll link that in the description. For this video, I'll just showcase the uh, highlights. What you're seeing now is the process of making the actual jetpack equipable so that it connects to the right spot on the character. I'm starting with the default Unreal Engine 5 third-person template and editing its blueprints. This took a couple tries to get right. It can be easy to get intimidated by the spiderweb of blueprints as a beginner, but slowly but surely it becomes intuitive, kind of like learning another language. It definitely beats hand-coding everything by a long shot. With the jetpack now in the correct spot on the character, we can go about making it functional. I'm not gonna act like I know what was going on here. It, I was just blindly following the tutorial at this point. Being able to take ideas and convey them into blueprints is a valuable skill, which leads me into the sponsor of this video, Wingfox. This is the Generative Motion Graphics and VFX course. The people at Wingfox presented some new tutorial series to bring over to the channel, and I had to pick this one. It's going to teach you how to take an idea for simulations and effects and convey it into blueprints in your next Unreal Engine 5 project. The course is currently being updated, so you can get it now for 62% off. On top of that, if you use my link in the description and code WFF15, you can receive an additional 15% off, meaning you can get this $50 course for less than 18 bucks. Heading down to the description and hitting that link is a great way to learn and the best way to support the channel. All right, we're back. So at around this point, the jetpack was supposed to work and it didn't. And you'll see me hopping around now in denial, hoping the code will just like magically spring my character into the sky. This was bad since I didn't know how any of it worked, but after about 20 minutes, I was able to track down the issue. All right, flight achieved. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Now, all that's left for that is some tweaking to the animations and applying ragdoll physics to the legs as a finishing touch. With all of that, we have our basic jetpack system set up and ready to go. Just threw in a simple Niagara particle system attached to the jetpack so it has a trail, and that's that. It's a start. Hey Drake, where'd you get that cool jetpack 3D model? <laughs> Technical stuff down and out of the way, this game is going to need some 3D models, which is like the fun part. I figured out how to do some kit bashing for sci-fi models when faced with making a car for the Endless Engines community challenge. We'll be using the same techniques for all the modeling in this video, but the kit bashing process first begins with gathering assets. I'm using Markham 3D's Greeble kit for all the models in this video. Huge shout out to his channel, I've gotten some serious mileage out of this little pack of assets. As per usual, everything is linked down in the description. So here is the jetpack process. I was going for a stereotypical two-pointed rocket pack. Classic. I've really been racking my brain about how to talk about the kit bashing process, so I'm just gonna ramble on a bit while the time lapse plays out. As you can see, I started off with Unreal Engine's modeling tools, creating some basic shapes and applying bevels. I then add the kit bash detail pieces on top of that. Mm -hmm. 
Some good tips for this, using Alt and Middle Mouse, you can change the pivot point of the model, which is super useful, giving you fine control of both movement and rotation of assets. When working at tiny scales like this, every bit of control helps. In the case of the jetpack, I'm only making one of the two engines to completion, and then I'll just duplicate one side and flip it to finish the piece. It's a lot of trial and error seeing what parts fill out the shape in a way that fits your mental picture. Most of my time editing was spent cutting out all of the stuff I ended up scrapping. To finish off a model, I apply a matte white material to everything. This is like applying a base coat when doing real model making. This helps me focus on the shape and form of the model first. By selecting all of the kit bash pieces, going up to Actor and Merge Actors, we combine the meshes into a finished model here. And that's the process, so we're going to take this and apply it to a whole spacesuit. Well, actually I lied. The next thing I made was this walker mech. I did some sketches for this, so I'm going to roll out a split screen. I don't really know how this fits into the game, but it definitely shows the versatility of the kit bashing process, and how we can make a whole array of 3D assets from the same pack. Having a sketch really helps you focus, especially when working with a limited pack of assets. The sketch identifies good forms and shapes, so the 3D design process becomes more about how do I achieve that silhouette or form with the assets at hand. This causes you to do some creative problem solving, which ultimately results in a cooler, more complex, and thought out seeming design. I was also trying to keep my palette of assets limited. I could go download 500 different pieces and find the exact part to fit what's in my head, but by trying to get creative with a smaller amount of pieces, it keeps all the models feeling like they're in the same universe. Repeated assets create unity and make the whole model more satisfying to look at. It also keeps the model from looking too busy or overcomplicated. So here's the finished rover. It ended up looking kind of like a frog, which is kind of neat. So now let's actually move on to some spacesuit design and kit bashing a helmet. So here for the sketches, I'm just going to be working out ideas. Am I going with any of these designs specifically? No. When we get into the kit bashing in 3D, we're still making creative decisions. These sketches just help narrow down themes I like and want to flesh out in the final design. So some sketches I really wanted to iterate on, like for this helmet design, and others I just did a more sketchy drawing and moved on immediately to the 3D. I found when I draw like I'm being held at gunpoint, I usually like the design better. It's super easy to overwork things in the beginning idea phase. When applying these assets, I'm first of all trying to avoid a visual mess, so it's important to be sparing with the fine details. One of the main goals is to make it feel like one piece as opposed to a bunch of separate assets, so I'm largely considering how to fill gaps without too many blatant clipping issues. I mentioned mileage out of the asset pack, but when working on individual models, you want to consider how to use repeated assets. By resizing and tweaking an asset through the scale and modeling tools, you can start to make assets work in ways they definitely weren't intended. Honestly, if you've ever played the game Spore, you've had plenty of practice doing this. You also want to do your best to avoid hard edges or have any floating geometry, so in the case of these panel pieces, I try to implement a flat surface behind it so everything looks cohesive. This is done once again just using the modeling tools. Anyone who does any type of art will know the struggle of attempting to explain the process. I think a lot of what makes art art is doing something and not really knowing how you did it. And as I watch back the time lapses, I can start to see themes to discuss, but the truth is, there is no specific process to this. 
I come into kit bashing with an exploratory mentality, and I'm always ready to pivot on an idea if something isn't working. Maybe one of the deciding factors for what makes a good project is the ability to scrap what's not working. Alright, I'm back, and just like the rest of the models, I add, we'll call it a base coat of the white material, and merge all the actors into a finished helmet. So the video's starting to run a little long, and I think you guys get the gist, so I'm just going to showcase the rest of the assets, all using the same process. So last step, how do we actually take all of these assets and attach them to our model? I hate retargeting. Taking one model and applying it to another is usually a headache, so instead of kit bashing a model and trying to retarget it to the Unreal Engine skeleton, we're just going to abuse the socket system. When in the third person blueprint, you can go up here and hit add static mesh and assign one of the models we just made. You drag the asset over and attach it to the third person character, then to the right you can select which socket you want to attach to. Rotate and position the model so it sits correctly, disable its collisions to avoid bugs, and that's it. So I just do this with all the separate pieces for each different body part as indicated by this high quality diagram. So yeah, stopping point, there it is. A custom space suit for this goofy ragdoll jetpack game. I think the models came out pretty satisfying by not worrying about materials, focusing entirely on form, and limiting myself to a set of assets. It's resulting in a style I'm pretty excited about. So what do you guys think? What would you like to see from this jetpack simulator experiment? Let me know down in the comments. I hope you found some inspiration in this video. Hopefully now you're better equipped to get out there and kit bash some assets for your own projects. It took a bit longer to make, but I do enjoy these longer form projects. So if you enjoyed and want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.